Hello and welcome to the Sheriff's Roundup. I'm Santa Barbara County Sheriff Bill Brown. For this edition of the Roundup, we want to begin by introducing you to a person who holds a significant place in the history of the Santa Barbara County Sheriff's Office. Louise Russell was hired by the Sheriff's Office in 1968 as a matron clerk and later became the first female sheriff's deputy. As you'll hear from Louise, the path she blazed for women to join the ranks of sheriff's deputies was challenging. I got my AA in uh, criminal justice, so I was interested in law enforcement in general. Um, my father was a reserve police officer in New Bedford, Massachusetts. It was just something I was interested in. I had five kids at home, so it was a big job to keep all the balloons in the air, so to speak. So I just walked in one day, and Sheriff Ross says, you're hired. <laughs> There were six of us women that were matron clerks. Anyway, we decided we were doing the same work as the male deputies, for the most part, other than on patrol. But we were transporting prisoners. We were taking care of the, the prisoners in the jail. You know, we were driving patrol cars here and there to pick up people and do things. So we figured, why are we getting half the salary? We wrote a letter to the sheriff, and we wrote a letter to the Board of Supervisors stating our case, and of course we were denied. We hired an attorney to take our case further because we really felt like we were doing everything the men were doing. And we all insisted that we take the deputy exam because if we were going to be deputies, we had to be, we had to be qualified. Anyway, the resolution of that uh, lawsuit was that the department decided to hire one female deputy, and that was me. So I felt fortunate to to have that opportunity. My first assignment was in the Juvenile Bureau, which was the Marshal's office at one point. So I was there for a while and enjoyed it. Counseled a lot of kids and found a runaway who had gone to Arizona and got her brought back. I got a nice letter from her father. From there, I applied to go to the courts because I thought, well, that'd be a good job for me with, with the kids and everything, you know, to have a, a daytime schedule. So I became a bailiff. I think I worked about 10 years for Pat McMahon, and I have a, a really nice letter from him of why he chose me and why he wanted me. He was very nice. He was such a, a jewel, you know, he was, he was pleasant. I was proud to wear the uniform, and for the most part, most of the people that I worked with, I was proud to work with. Not everybody, unfortunately, because there were some that still didn't want women doing their job, you know. That, they were few and far between. My advice to a female deputy just coming on the job now would be try to be on equal basis with the men and uh, do the best job you can do. For the most part, I enjoyed it. You know, it was an interesting career. I can't think of anything else I would rather do than law enforcement. It was a good job and it was a, you know, a rewarding job. I got some good stories about people that I caught up with and put in jail, you know. <laughs> so that was good. Thank you, Louise, for the service you provided and the precedent you set. You opened the door for the many female deputies who followed in your footsteps, and we are proud of you. Biddy, biddy, biddy. I can't breathe. Roger, are they locked inside the boat? Roger, can you get back on board and unlock the boat, uh, lock, unlock the door so they can get off? I'm putting the engulf boat. We're not going to make an attempt with our uh, pump to put it out. The main uh, objective is to look for victims. During the early morning hours of September 2nd, 2019, another disaster struck Santa Barbara County. The Conception dive boat caught fire while anchored off Santa Cruz Island, and 34 souls who were aboard perished. This incident ended up being the worst disaster in the history of Santa Barbara County in terms of loss of human life. At approximately 3.30 a.m. that morning, the U.S. Coast Guard and partnering agencies responded to the report of a vessel fire off the north shore of Santa Cruz Island near Platts Harbor. Emergency responders encountered the Conception, a 75-foot commercial diving boat based out of Santa Barbara Harbor, fully engulfed in flames. The vessel ultimately sank to the ocean floor at approximately 7.20 a.m. Five of the 39 people aboard were immediately rescued, and four decedents were initially recovered. 
An additional four victims were seen on the ocean floor later that day, but were not immediately recoverable. 26 passengers remained unaccounted for. On Tuesday, September 3rd, it became apparent that there were no more survivors and search and recovery efforts began. A total of 84 divers from the Santa Barbara Sheriff's Office, the San Luis Obispo Sheriff's Office, the FBI, Ventura County Sheriff's Office, Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department, and the National Park Service responded and worked together to search for and recover the remaining victims. As they were recovered, the victims' remains were transported to the Santa Barbara Sheriff's Coroner's Office, where the process of identification began. The members of our coroner's office were charged with identifying each victim and determining their cause and manner of death. The remains of the victims had suffered varying degrees of damage from the devastating fire, requiring DNA analysis for identification. The Sacramento County Coroner, Kim Jin, offered the use of the Andy Rapid DNA system that her office had. This assistance allowed the remains to be quickly identified and released to their families. On Wednesday, September 11th, the last victim from the conception was located in a cove just west of where the vessel had sank. Salvage efforts refloated the vessel and it was subsequently transported to Port Wainimi. I want to thank and acknowledge all the members of our agency and the many allied agencies that assisted in the management of this terrible disaster. Their dedication, professionalism, and compassion during this difficult event was extraordinary. In the end, a total of 43 agencies and more than 500 people came together as a team of teams to manage this incident. And once again, the Santa Barbara County community graciously and compassionately came to the support of families who had lost loved ones in tragic circumstances. I repeatedly heard from family members how impressed they were that this community treated them in such a kind and loving manner during such a terrible time. Thank you, Santa Barbara, for once again showing that you care. Great progress continues to be made on the Northern Branch Jail. Lieutenant Brian Olmstead provided some drone shots of the facility to give everyone a feel for how far along we are and how close the opening is now. It's very impressive to see how much has been accomplished. The final completion date is projected to be March 13, 2020. I recently took a walk through myself and was impressed at some of the finishing touches that are now showing up. Some of the furniture has been arriving for installation, as has the conveyor system for inmate property. We really are getting a great new building with a lot of features that will help move our custody function into a new era. Recently, demonstrations were provided to the Northern Branch Jail team for the final selection of a new body scanner that will be part of the arrest intake process. These devices have had dramatic effects on the amount of contraband that gets into other jail facilities. Here's Commander Tom Jenkins to describe the features of the Northern Branch Jail and how its form meets function. We have anywhere from 60 to 120 workers on the job site that are uh, contractors or subcontractors that are putting the various finishes in or doing the tasks that need to be done. There's work going on constantly, all day long, materials coming in. It is a ongoing process. We have pretty much designed this to be a full service uh, jail in the North County. It doesn't replace the South County Jail, but it also works independent of the South County Jail if it needs to but it's gonna be part of a system approach. So we have everything here. Not only do we have intake, we have food service, we have laundry, we have housing, uh, we have a medical area, we have uh, multiple housing units for lots of different classifications of staff, and then we have an administrative side, um, it, everything we need to support the operation up here. So it's gonna help with our overcrowding issues in Santa Barbara. It's actually gonna provide a place for a larger segment of our North County inmates to be housed so that it's a shorter distance to court, their families can visit them more readily, uh, and if they are released, they're released closer to their homes. Uh, additionally, it's going to be a, mostly a direct supervision facility, which is a much safer facility. In direct supervision, the custody deputy is in the housing unit all day long. 
He can monitor what's going on in the facility. He can monitor how the inmates are reacting quite a bit. And he can also mitigate uh, issues that may come up before they actually negatively affect the, the inmates or the staff in the facility. So you have a better handle on what's going on and you have a better means to control what's going on. It'll help the inmates to re-enter society because the expectations when they're in the facility are going to be similar to what the expectations are when they're outside. We're going to have more programming. We'll have less inmate movement in the facility. It's a little more open. There's a lot more light, uh, a lot more cameras so they can see what's going on. So we, we think it'll be a vast improvement for our staff up here. Thank you, Commander Jenkins. These are exciting times with our anticipated opening just around the corner. On Monday, October 21st, we welcomed new employees and congratulated current members of the Sheriff's Office on some new roles. Rafael Luna was welcomed as a correctional counselor and Crystal Carrillo as a communications dispatcher. Giuseppe Arnaldi, Sean Banks Jr., Valerie Centeno, Scott Naganuma, Raymond Lambert, Vincente Ramirez, and John Valenti were all sworn in as sheriff's deputies. This round of deputies included several with interesting background stories. Giuseppe Arnaldi is the third Deputy Arnaldi at the Sheriff's Office, following the lead of his father, Lieutenant Butch Arnaldi, and his sister, Deputy Francesca Arnaldi. Giuseppe's mother, Marla, is also a member of the Sheriff's Office, working as an Administrative Office Professional Senior. Also of interest, two of our new deputies bring with them entire careers of experience. Deputy Naganuma is retired from the Santa Barbara Police Department, and Deputy Valenti retired from the California Highway Patrol. Jerome Kemp, a 13-year veteran of the Sheriff's Office, was promoted to Sheriff's Sergeant. Jerome has served as a Correction Officer, Custody Deputy, Sheriff's Deputy, and Sheriff's Deputy Special Duty. He's received many awards, including the H. Thomas Geary Award for Superior Performance in 2014. Also promoted during that ceremony was our new public information officer. This position is one of the most visible in our agency, and during times of great challenge, loss, and disaster, is often the person delivering the message of the sheriff's office. Do you know what kind of gun it was? Uh, we do. We are not releasing that at this time. Do you know how the fourth person got to the hospital? After over six years of being the voice of our agency, Kelly Hoover bid us farewell this quarter. Kelly joined the sheriff's office in January of 2013 and was the first female civilian to serve as the agency's public information officer. Prior to her arrival, Kelly's experience was in the media as both a broadcast and print journalist. Thankfully, Kelly's new opportunity didn't take her very far. We continue to see her and hear from her in her new role as the community relations manager for the city of Goleta. Kelly, thank you for doing an outstanding job for us and for leaving some big shoes to fill. The person selected to fill those shoes is Raquel Zick, an 18-year veteran employee with the county. Here she is to tell you a little bit about herself. As Sheriff Brown shared, I'm a longtime member of the Sheriff's Office family. I began my career with the county as an intake and release specialist with the probation department before being hired by the Sheriff's Department. I served as a patrol deputy for four years, then went on to work in dispatch for six years. In 2014, I moved to the administrative support team and became the administrative assistant to Sheriff Brown. As a founding member of the Sheriff's media team, I had the opportunity to work with Kelly Hoover and see firsthand the fast-paced and exciting work of a PIO. I'm honored to be selected for this very important role and look forward to sharing the stories of the amazing work my friends and colleagues at the Sheriff's Office do every day. Congratulations, Raquel. We're proud of you and glad to see you assume this important position within our agency. Next, we'd like to offer a reminder about the importance of crime reporting. Here to tell you about it and our new crime reporting option is one of the people who was instrumental in developing that resource, Sheriff's Deputy Special Duty, Eric Delgadillo.
There are many apps and online groups that are great for uniting communities and sharing information. It's great to see technology being used to bring communities closer together, but I would like to take a moment to caution again to use of these platforms to discuss crimes that are occurring instead of reporting them to local law enforcement. These posts sometimes include sentiments about not wanting to bother the deputies by reporting incidents. We would like to remind our public that we are here for you 24 hours a day, every day of the year. I would also like to remind you to call 911 when an emergency is happening. For incidents that are not emergencies, because they are no longer in progress, please call 805-681-4100. Additionally, we have made it possible for you to complete a police report whenever it is convenient for you by using our online reporting system at sbsheriff.org. You can use our online reporting portal to report crimes such as theft, including identity theft, credit card fraud, harassing phone calls, lost property, civil disputes, trespassing, custody disputes, vandalism, animal complaints, and to request a check of your residence while you're on vacation. As always, the Sheriff's Office is here for you. Thank you, Eric, for that important information. Lastly, as we conclude this edition of the Roundup and head into the holiday season, we want to share this video of a wild turkey that chickened out on the opening day of hunting season by hiding at the Solvang Sheriff Station. As far as we know, her efforts were successful and she didn't wind up in anyone's freezer. Well, that's gonna do it for this edition of the Sheriff's Roundup. Thanks for watching and thanks for supporting us as we protect your safety.